extreme weather is changing. There's more extreme rainfall, heavy flooding, forest fires. There isn't really a signature document. Being able to predict these extreme events more accurately is kind of the big challenge that we're facing right now. There's 100 terabytes of climate data every day from satellites, from observations, from models. So climate data is a big data problem. We need things that are fast, that can sift through all of that data rapidly and accurately. And deep learning is almost perfectly poised for problems in climate science. A lot of NERSC users are using TensorFlow. It's one of the more popular frameworks. We use TensorFlow to iterate quickly over different models, different layer parameters. For this particular climate project, to create the deep learning model, we started from segmentation models which have proven to be successful, for example, our satellite imagery segmentation tasks. And then we use TensorFlow to enhance the models until we found like a set of models which perform well enough for this specific task. But for the volume of the data, complexity of the data, the network required 14 teraflops. So if you want to do this on your workstation, it would take like months to train. To really tackle these problems it requires the largest computational resources that are available on the planet. So systems like the Summit Supercomputer. It's two tennis courts in total size. I mean, this thing is state-of-the-art. It's a million times faster than your common laptop. 3.3 exaflops. It just imagine what you do at your workstation, but now imagine having 27,000 times that power. We can do that now. We were surprised how, how good it actually scales. 1,000 nodes, then 2,000 nodes, 5,000 nodes. This was the first time anybody's ever run an AI application at this scale. Instead of having the climate scientists figure out how to like write high-tuned code, they could express things in a very natural way in Python, in TensorFlow, and get all the high-performance code that most HPC people are used to within TensorFlow. We're now entering the space where AI can actually contribute to the predictions of these extreme weather events. When you combine traditional HPC with AI, you can tackle things we never thought that we could tackle. Fusion reactor research, understanding diseases like Alzheimer's, cancer, right? That, that's like incredible. We've shown that with a high productivity framework such as TensorFlow, you can get to massive scale and you can get like awesome performance and accomplish your goals. Genetics, neuroscience, cosmology, high energy physics. That is, that's immensely exciting for me.